Hi, and welcome to our next podcast on medical statistics. Today, we're going to talk about bias. So what's the plan for this podcast? Well, we're going to start by talking about what bias is. We'll discover that there are loads and loads of types of bias, and we're going to talk about just a couple of them. Um, And in talking about these two types of bias, we'll also introduce the concept of relative risk and odds ratio, and then we will wrap up at the end. Studies tend to ask, um, how does exposure relate to disease or outcome and uh, many of the studies that we have read or have been involved in uh, will uh, look at this. Um, Is there a link between a drug and a particular disease or is there a link between an environmental factor and a particular outcome or perhaps is there a link between such and such a disease as an exposure and a different health outcome. Um, Or is there a link between, say, a personal characteristics, say, body mass index, and a particular disease? We look for these associations, um, and typically, uh, when we're performing a study, at least, we get excited when we find that there is an association between the exposure we're looking at and the disease or the outcome that we're looking at. Uh, Well, we have to ask, when we've found an association, whether there really is one. And there are a few things which can mean that what initially seems like an association, what seems like an exciting result in our study that we've carried out or that we're reading, uh, turns out not to be. So the first one we could think about is random error. But we're not going to talk about this in detail because we've covered it previously. We've talked about type 1 and type 2 errors. We've talked about p-values. Um, if we have a p-value of 0.05, then the difference could still have been observed merely by chance. This is random error. If you have a p-value of, in fairness, 0.0001, then uh, this could still have been observed by chance. And that would be random error. Bias is something slightly different. It's something in the way that we've designed or conducted or analysed our study which alters the size of the effect that the exposure has on the outcome. A good way to think about this is with the analogy of an archer shooting at a target. So suppose that you had an exceptional world-class archer who was firing at the target. Um, Nevertheless, as each arrow hit the target, um, it would not hit perfectly dead centre of the bullseye. Uh, There would be a scatter effect around the bullseye. You can see that on target number one. Um, That's a bit like random error. So if we were to take a trial and repeat it over and over again, we wouldn't always get exact, exactly the same answer. Uh, we would get answers which approximate our true answer and would vary around there. We would have sampling error, a random error. Bias, on the other hand, so suppose there was something about the archer's bow or the arrows that they had in their quiver or something to do with the way that they aimed or there was a certain amount of wind or up or down draft or whatever, which meant that the arrows consistently hit off target. There's something systematic going on, which means that the arrows are not going where they should be. Well, this is a bit like there being bias in a trial, something to do with the way that it's designed or the way that we measure our outcome or the way that we've selected our trial participants um, means that uh, the result we get is consistently wrong and if we were to repeat the trial in exactly the same way it would still be consistently wrong there's something wrong and so you can see the analogy there of the arrows always being pulled off to one side Uh, there are loads and loads and loads of types of bias Um, I'll put a link to a PDF um, and the list that I've got here is just taken straight from that PDF Um, and as you can see it is a long list What I'm not going to go do now is go through each one in turn uh, because that would be impractical and boring. So instead, what I'm going to do is look at a couple of examples. The first type of bias we're going to look at is selection bias, and we will use a made-up example to illustrate it. So imagine that you were designing a study to look at whether there is an association between lower urinary tract symptoms in men and social status. Now, imagine that, um, unbeknown to us, that there really is no association, no difference within the general population. 
Uh, we don't know that and we're going to design a study and this study will demonstrate how bias can give us an erroneous result. So in the general population, 10% of men have moderate or severe low urinary tract symptoms regardless of their social status. So like I say, we wouldn't know this as we design the trial, but let's see what happens um, if we design a biased trial. Okay, so here's how we design our study. Um, the hypothesis that lower urinary tract symptoms are more, are more common in those with a lower social status. And the way that we look into this is that we take 200 consecutive patients seen in the urology outpatient department um, and they're presenting to urology for lower urinary tract symptoms. And we ask them to rate their ur lower urinary tract symptoms. Um, and there's a standardized questionnaire that you can use to do that. Uh, and we also collect the social status of these people. Um, and so then we can look at the correlation, if there is one, between lower urinary tract symptoms and social status. And here are the results. So in the higher social status group, 20% had moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms, and in the lower social status group, 40% had. We can compare those using what's called a relative risk. Relative risk is what you get when you divide the risk of disease in the exposed group by the risk of disease in the unexposed group. Now, in our case, we're calling the exposed group the lower social status group. And so the relative risk is 40% percent divided by 20 percent which is two so a relative risk of two um, means that the disease is twice as uh, common or that the risk is twice as great uh, in the exposed group or in the lower social status group okay so fantastic we've proved an association and then we can go on and we can publish and we can uh, head forward to academic fame Okay, so here's another made-up example, um, but the difference here is that we're using a case control type study. So a different study, uh, we select 100 patients seen in the urology clinic with moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms. And for each of these patients, we select controls who have the same age, similar comorbidities, etc. And we look at the social status of these people. So here are the results of this study. Um, so in the in the group with the mild lower urinary tract symptoms, we found that 60 came from high social status and 40 came from low social status. And in the group with moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms, 30 came from high social status, whereas 70 came from the lower social status. Now, notice we can't use this data to estimate risk or incidence here because we've selected people based on them having the disease, lower urinary tract symptoms, or not. We picked 100 people with moderate and severe, moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms, and 100 without. But that doesn't mean that the instance in our study is one in two. We could have selected two controls for each case. Then we'd have 100 people with disease and 200 without, but that wouldn't make the instance one in three. So in this situation where we have a case control study, what we can work out is what's called an odds ratio. This is the odds ratio. So odds ratio is, as you might expect, the odds of the disease in the exposed group divided by the odds of the disease in the unexposed group. So if we pick somebody with low social status, the odds of them having moderate or severe low urinary tract symptoms is 70 over 40. And if we pick somebody with a high social status, the odds of them having moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms is 30 over 60. And when we work that out, we get an odds ratio of 3.5. An odds ratio of greater than 1 suggests a positive association. So there we go, there's two examples of studies which seem to have shown a, an association between lower social status and moderate or severe lower urinary tract symptoms. But we said at the, we said at the start of our made-up example that really there was no association, so what's gone wrong? 
Well, suppose that those with a lower social status um, are less likely to go to their GP with mild to low urinary tract symptoms. And so they're less likely to get referred to the clinic. And so men with a lower social status and milder symptoms are less likely to make it into our study population. And so our study does not reflect what's going on in the general population. And that would be selection bias. Or at least it'd be one type of selection bias, because there are lots of others. Uh, so for another example, imagine that you wanted to design a cohort study looking at the effectiveness of screening for melanoma in the general population. And you decide that the way that you're going to recruit people into your study is just by asking for volunteers. Well, what might happen is that those with a family history of melanoma may be more likely to volunteer for your study, either because they're just more interested in melanoma or because they'd quite like to be screened for it. So your study would systematically misrepresent the population that you're trying to study, and this would introduce bias. The second type of bias we're going to talk about briefly is information bias, sometimes called classification bias. This is some problem with the way that we measure our exposure or our outcome. We've looked previously at tests and binary tests, and you know about sensitivity and specificity, so you'll understand that it would be possible for a test uh, a test for exposure or for outcome to misclassify um, participants in the study and that could lead to bias. Uh, recall bias, so for example imagine you're doing a, a study looking at the relationship between asbestos exposure and lung cancer and you're doing a retrospective study where you interview those with lung cancer and you interview controls who do not have lung cancer you could imagine that those with lung cancer may be more likely to recall an exposure to asbestos, and this would lead to a bias. Loss to follow-up bias. Um, so an example of this would be if you were doing a, um, a cohort study looking at uh, the relationship between smoking status and bladder cancer. And smoking is related to bladder cancer. But in your study, smokers may be more likely to drop out of the study due to smoking-related illnesses, and this will lead to a bias. Information bias can be subdivided into differential and non-differential um, bias. So in non-differential information or classification bias, the error occurs across all groups within the study. So a simple example of this would be um, if some scales, a set of scales that you're using for weighing patients was miscalibrated and read weights as being 10% lighter. This would lead to a misclassification of BMI. But the misclassification would be constant. It wouldn't, there would be no difference regarding uh, you know, which group of your study stood on the scales. So this would be a non-differential classification bias. And the other type is a differential classification or information bias. So imagine our study looking at social status and lower urinary tract symptoms um, and imagine you used a questionnaire um, to quantify lower urinary tract symptoms which was really very complicated and used complex language and then it might be that the different groups are able to understand the questionnaire to a different level and therefore the different groups might fill in the questionnaire with differing levels of accuracy and so this would introduce a differential misclassification bias. Okay, so we've had a, a brief overview of bias. We started by defining what it is. Uh, we talked about different types of bias, and there are loads and loads of them. And then we looked at two particular types. We looked at uh, selection bias and information bias. And along the way, we introduced the concept of um, relative risk and odds ratio as well. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com
and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.